Hello friends. In this video, we will talk about statically determinate and statically indeterminate structures. So we know what is the equation of the equilibrium is. We know that the equation of the equilibrium says that a body or a structure is in equilibrium when summation of the sum of the forces in the x direction is zero. So I'm talking about the 2D only. And uh, sum of the forces in the y direction is zero. And the sum of the moments at a certain point is equal to zero. So these are the, we say that uh, three equations of the equilibrium. So three equations of equilibrium. Okay. And let's say that we got any structure. So we got a structure. So this is a hinge support we know. And let's say this is a beam and there we have got the roller support as well. And if we can solve this structure using these three equations of the equilibrium, then this structure is known as statically determined structure. So I'll just say ST for the statically de determined structure. So what do you mean by solving this structure? So when you have got any equation, let's say x minus 2 is equal to 5. And when someone says solve this equation, what do you do? You find the value of x as 5 plus 2 is equal to 7. So solving this equation means finding the unknown in this equation. Similarly, solving a structural member or let's say a structure, it means that finding the unknowns in that structure. So here, what unknowns do we have? So we know that we have got two unknowns here. One is the support reaction. Another is also this support reaction in the, this is in the vertical direction and this is in the horizontal direction. And similarly, we got a vertical reaction at this point. So when the load is acting on this structure, so two reactions act at this point and one reaction at, acts at this point and we don't know the value of these reactions. So finding the value of this reaction is known as solving this uh, structure. So if we can find these three unknown reactions using these three equations of the equilibrium, then this structure is known as statically determined structure. So now uh, another thing that we need to know is a term called as a degree, degree of indeterminacy. So now uh, we'll find whether our structure is determinate or not. So degree of indeterminacy, if I just denote it by I E, so this is equal to R minus E C minus three. So here I is the degree of indeterminacy and R is the number of number of unknown number of unknown rea unknown support reactions. Number of unknown support reactions. And EC is the so number of internal releases, internal releases, releases. So I'll just uh, tell you what this internal release is. And three, we know what this is. So from where uh, this three comes? So this three comes from this uh, three equations of the equilibrium, right? So one, two, three. So this three comes from there. So now let's say that we can find IE very conveniently. So let's say we can calculate IE. If this IE is equal to zero, then we say that the structure is statically determinate. Okay. And if IE is greater than zero, we say that the structure is statically indeterminate. And if the IE is less than zero, we say that structure is unstable. Unstable. However, uh, even if the, you know, this uh, degree of indeterminacy is greater than zero, is a non-zero value, so it might be zero or greater than zero, uh, even then the structure might be unstable. But if this is less than zero, then the structure is definitely unstable. So what happens is that when we got a long span uh, structure, so let's say that we got, you know, these many spans and we got a single uh, let's say a single slab on top of uh, these all these supports okay so uh, so there is the ground 
as you can see that the slab is a single from uh, this position up to this position uh, let's say that the distance from here up to here it might be you know uh, uh, let's say it's like uh, 200 meter so in that case this is a very long span uh, from here to here okay so from here to here it's a very long distance and uh, we got a single slab right so this can cause uh, this can cause significant damage uh, in the slab so having this long slab uh, without any breaking in between it can cause significant damage to the slab so due to this reason what we do is that we break the structure at somewhere between and we just join the structure uh, so that is not a permanent joining so it is just like joining with the hinges so you see the hinges of the door how they can rotate so the the outer frame of your uh, door uh, so these frames so they are connected to your door so the door is connected to that frame still the door is separate to that frame right okay so this thing also happens over here so the hinge is provided uh, in between uh, so that uh, the slab can be broken into two parts and uh, so what happens is that at this position so at this position uh, the movement turns out to be zero the movement is equal to zero uh, in other words we say that the movement is released at this position the movement from here doesn't get transferred to here so it gets totally dissipated at this position so due to which internal hinges are very important so generally they are provided in the bridge structures that you can see over here so you can see that uh, this span and this span they have been broken with this hinge so what the internal hinges do so the ec is the number of internal hinges and generally in a structure so let's say that this is our hinge support over here and this is our roller support and we got another roller support and we got another roller support the uh, in a structure the hinges are generally uh, denoted by uh, generally denoted by a dot like this so here in this structure we say that ec is equal to one because the number of internal hinges is equal to one so if we got internal hinge over here as well internal hinge over here as well then the value of ec is equal to three so this is how we calculate the value of the ec